Today, we're gonna to give you five things that are gonna make you a better iron player, and I've brought an expert coach along with me, Mr. Adrian Fryer. Thank you for giving these tips. So tip number one. Firstly, we need to know what is the problem and why it's happening, and then how are we gonna fix them? What are these five things that you're gonna give us that are gonna fix them? Well, I think these five things are really gonna just improve someone's technique overall, but more importantly, gonna control the striking of the ball and yep. the, the uh, accuracy and control, which is what we need in golf. Yeah, that's what you know? irons are more aimed for, getting the right strike and getting more of your control into the flag. It's not about all out distance, is it? Not necessarily, no. It's all about being able to put a consistent strike on it and, and then learn your distances okay. appropriately and get some duplication, some control, you know. Consistency. Yep. Right, number one, hit us with it. What is it? Well, one of the biggest problems I think all coaching and teaching pros see every day is people's perception of the grip. The very word grip suggests people should just grip the thing, grip the Strangle life out of the thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think in other sports, if people come from other disciplines where effort equals results and power, yeah. it's slightly more subtle than that in golf. I'd like you to think of it a little bit more like badminton, that if you were going to return a shuttlecock, you want yeah. your wrists free and alive. If you were holding it hard like an axe or tight, yeah. that's not going to work. That's actually going to rob you of any speed. Yeah. So we need to be able to be able to, the grip has a couple of really big functions. Can you grip it in a fashion that allows you to square the club face, which obviously ultimately gives you control? Yeah. And can you grip it in a fashion on a full swing that gives you freedom and speed? It allows your leverage, yeah. it allows your levers to work and unload that club appropriately at the right time. Yeah. If you're gripping it tight, you won't be able to do that. There's two or three things that happen. People, you know, often people will show their friends how to play golf. You know, the first grip they get exposed to is the interlocking grip where they force each, the roots of their fingers tight yeah. into each other. And there's probably a little bit of a myth that the interlocking grip is good for people with small hands. I've got really, really small hands, so much so I actually can barely interlock them. Yeah. So I find it uncomfortable. Yeah. But when players jam their fingers in tight, it pulls the club into the palm area. Right. It pulls the right hand underneath and it gets the hands opposing each other yeah. rather than working with each other as a unit. So a lighter so, and only so, maybe just yeah. crossing. So if you're going to interlock, like Tiger or Jack, partially interlock, this yeah. allows you to align your hands correctly and give you that freedom. Alternatively, some players will do a baseball grip, yeah. but the Varden grip, named after Harry Varden, yeah. you know, the overlap as we call it, where yeah. you just piggyback your last little finger there. Okay. And that's what I would recommend to most people. Why? More of an overlap yeah, grip. Because it gets that speed. Yeah. Now, of course, there's different things with the alignment of the hands. And one really little simple tip for anybody, if I've got a couple of coins here, a couple of two pence pieces, and I pinch it between my thumb here, and I pinch this one between my thumbs, I can align this on the handle, little twist to the right, little kink in my wrist. Now this coin or V is lined up to my right shoulder. Nice. You know, the books would talk about a couple of knuckles, two and a half knuckles or what have you. Then I can feed the trail hand in and again align those. So then now both of those are working with each other. Yeah. So what would be the second thing we need to hit these better iron shots then? We've got a good grip now, where do I go to? Good, so the grip's hopefully going to control the face, but everybody on planet Earth who's playing golf, and it doesn't matter whether it's a tour player, whether it's someone starting off, we all have a responsibility that to we've got to generate a swing that moves the club on the right path. Yeah. So we're moving the club round our body in the correct arc or yeah. plane or attitude so it travels in the right direction, yeah. i.e. towards the target yeah. as we hit it. We also have a responsibility, as I said, with the grip to square the club face. Yeah. So if you can get the head traveling in the right direction and looking in the right direction and the ball gets in the way of it, it's you've, got a, battle. <laughs> you've got a pretty good chance that you're going to hit a lot of fairways and a lot of greens. Yeah. If your swing's all over the place and you're chopping across it, be it too much from the inside or too much from the outside, yeah. or you have poor club face control, and yeah. you're presenting it too close, too open, you're going to see a big variability okay. on your shots. So what would we do maybe well, the just to try thing, and get it a little bit more neutral? Just a little simple drill. I've just broken a wooden tee there kind of in half and I'm going to insert it in the bottom of my grip. But notice how I've aligned that tee just so it's mirroring the club face here. So this is mirroring the club face. 
What we're going to do is use this as an indicator, one, to check our playing and two, to check the control of the club face. Okay, and what are these, these clubs down for? Okay, well, what a lot of people don't realise, you know, when you come to golf, you think, well, if I swing back straight and through straight, that's going to make the ball go straight. But the reality yeah. is we're moving it in a circle. Yeah. We're also moving the club on an inclined plane. Yeah. So as we're swinging back, it's on the angle it's designed. So yeah. with golf, you know, they got the design of the club right the first time. So two things with this little tee, what I'm going to do now, as I swing back as a checkpoint, you can create this little station. Yeah. And as you swing back, I'm now pointing the end of the club, as you call the end of the tee, sorry, down towards this shaft here, yeah. as you can see. And your club's on the inside of this club. Correct, this club yeah. I'm going to, so I'm going initially backwards and then folding it up on plane. So you see the shaft is pointing at the baseline if it had a laser beam in it. Yeah. But now this T peg is pointing down here. Yeah. Now this T peg is representing the club face. So that we means. We don't want it two down yeah, here or two, two down over here. There. Yeah. So if I've got the T two down, yeah. that probably means the club face is going to be open. Okay. So then I'm going to have to take some remedial action, release it a bit early, which is not going to help my strike yeah. to try and square it. Conversely, yeah. If I've got the T pointing out too much here, yeah. the face is now very closed. Yeah. So that means I'm going to have to do a Dustin Johnson or something and get underneath it and hold it and block release it. Yeah. So ideally, we want to create some good habits with the good grip we spoke about yeah. previously. And then if I'm bringing the club back and hinging it, now the T's pointing at this baseline. Yeah. And then the next key is as I rotate it down to impact, you can see the T's got back to square and the club face is yeah. square underneath my forearm. And then finally, as I release, Again, it's pointing back down this way. Right. So the club's getting on plane. This is a little bit not as important, but certainly here. Back and through. Very yeah. key. So then we're doing those things I mentioned. We're moving the club in the right shape around our body. Most importantly, traveling briefly towards the target. And I say briefly, because yeah. impacts only are one, two thousandths of a second long. Yeah. But if we can do that, square it up at impact and release it. This is allowing us to do two things, controlling the face, controlling the path, which Very are key nice. to good iron striking. So that's two things there. What would we go into number three? What would help us be a better iron player? Well, the next thing you need to be able to do, of course, is time that release. Okay. There's a lot of stuff now on the internet about laying the club down and holding it late and so on. But as the great John Jacobs said, who are very fortunate enough to spend a bit of time with, when people started talking about hitting it late and hitting it early, he used to say, well, what's wrong with hitting it at the right time? So the right time is being able to release this club. So why are we, why are we creating angles in a golf swing? We create a lever system with our lead arm and the shaft and the wrist. Yeah. We want to store those angles, but then ideally we want to use them. Yeah. So there's a big issue, you know, at the moment in golf instruction where people are trying to hold it late and trying to pivot. That's yeah. no use. If you just drag the handle past the ball, you'll never square the club face. Yeah. But also you won't get rid of your angle. So just like throwing a ball, if you try to throw a ball without yeah. unloading your arm, it's not going to happen. Ultimately, a javelin, a ball, you're unloading those angles. Serving yeah. a tennis ball, exactly the same. Okay, nice. Now, admittedly, some players may get them a little early. And would players maybe get them feeling a something just after impact, maybe just folding it into a small finish, is that going to help you if you could demonstrate It, it one would of those? do that, but one of the oldest drills in the world was a Henry Cotton drill, it was, we called it the hit and stop drill. Yeah. And this is a great drill for your irons, yeah. and probably a little bit like you see Tommy Fleetwood where he gets that sawn off finish, yeah. but what it does, it concentrates the hit at the bottom of the arc. Well, let's let's so see one of those, you, then. what yeah. would that look like? So if you imagine you've got a tree and you don't want to hit it, you're going to make a three-quarter backswing and just punch it out. So I'm going to hit and stop this. And even there, with a short little one, it's got a great sounding strike. Well, you can see that it's straight got nearly on. all the way up to the green now. We're at 160 away, and you've hit a, what looked like a chip, and it's, yep. it's all the way there. So that's just unloading all those angles at the yeah, right time. Just timing that release, so you unload them, you get that snap yeah. at the bottom. And again, this is word, where the grip's so snap. important. Yeah. What is the fourth thing that is going to help us then get some good iron strikes and some good iron play out on the golf course? Okay, so I mentioned before with golf, you've got to swing your arms and turn your body. Yeah. But you've got to turn your body in a very particular fashion and yeah. swing your arms as we described in the other tip yeah. in the right angle. So what you need to do is understand your turns and tilts as I call it. Yeah. Now depending on where you are in your golfing experience, if you're a very good player who's hooking it and pushing it, it's highly likely that you may be turning correctly and then getting too much tilt with your shoulders. Yeah. Getting too much side bend, too much down. 
Yeah. So in the golf swing, really, it's a blend of down and around. Okay. So we swing the club down and around. And what's a good tilt and turn then? What's that going to well, look like? Well, ideally, again, shows? it depends on where you are. If you're a slicer and you're turning and coming over the top, yeah. So your staff shaft's getting too steep, your shoulder plane here's getting too steep, you're probably coming over it and across it. So we're either going to be too much yeah. over or too much under. Correct. What, so what if do you're we want to look like yeah. if we're going to do it right? Ideally, in your, from a drilling point of view, if you're in a stick up and you just put your hands up, you want to practice just feeling your turns are pretty level. That's but if, idea. You're phoned, nice if, you're, yeah, if you're prone to fading the ball, you may have to feel your, drop your treble shoulder a little bit more. It creates a bit more side bend, a bit more shift gets you to come from the inside. And then the opposite if you're Correct. up so if you're coming you're little... too much from the inside as yeah. a low handicapper and too much shift and drive, again, def definitely feel you turn your shoulders out more level. Okay, let's so, see Let's see what, then what it would look like with a good turn. Let's clip okay, one away. So we're in that turn. I like that stick turn. up feeling. Two That's turns. A, a good idea. Again, a lovely strike. Very straight shots as well. Yeah. Very consistent. So we've had four tips there. What's the fifth and final thing that everyone needs to do to you know, complete the golf swing, maybe hit better shots and tie it all together? I think it's important having satisfied those things that it culminates in a balanced finish. Okay. It's really important that everybody finish balanced and disciplined. Yeah. If you watch the top player finish and hit 10 or 20 shots in a row, his finish or her, her finish would look identical yeah. each time, particularly on the practice ground. Yeah. And I have that issue, as I say, with all my amateurs, that if you're in the Olympics and you jumped off a pommel horse and you're doing this, you're not going to win many medals. Yeah. Well, if you want to produce accurate duplicating golf shots, it doesn't just end at the golf ball. Yeah. If you want the swing to be the right shape, you carry on and you're able to hold that finish balanced. Yeah. It's almost like the finish you'd see in the magazine every single time you almost exactly, tell a good yeah. golf about yeah. it because they're holding it and staring it down as well. Yeah. Someone who's poor, out of control is all over the shop trying to find where the ball is. So yeah. give us a thought then, if, you, if you're swinging the golf club, what do you want to feel to try and well, achieve you want to that like, good finish? You, know, you certainly want to feel that you're collecting the ball. Yep. When you follow through, I want to see the shaft finishing kind of literally pretty much through your eye line here. Okay. I want your knees pinched together, tummy and belt buckle at the target here, yep. shoe up on your toe. Yep. And it's important you do that each time. The golf swing doesn't end at the ball. Yeah. It ends at the finish and the yep. ball is collected as yep. I say on the Almost way. Almost want to watch the ball land down, don't you? See if you can hold that. Certainly, yeah. And, go and what it. it does, it makes you swing in a fashion that's du duplicatable and, yeah. and repeatable. If you're swinging mm. on the limit all the time, yeah. a hundred percent of your effort, you're not yeah. going to finish balanced. Yeah. You're not, you know, sooner or later it's going to fall to pieces. Okay, well let's see that then. So we've got some great tips there so far. Let's see number five. We're going to stick the finish, and hopefully deliver another consistent golf shot just like the other ones. Lovely, and the best one of them all. Nicely struck, there held the finish, and there we go. So five things, if you're struggling with your iron play or even just your golf swing in general, try those out. A big thank you to Adrian for giving us those, and we'll see you in another lesson very soon.